Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. American Dirt by Janine Cummins opens with a sudden violent intrusion. An eight-year-old boy named Luca is standing before the toilet in his grandmother's house in Acapulco when a bullet flies through the open window. Let's welcome my guest, Rebecca Espinoza Kubaki, who is no stranger to Dinner and a Book. Welcome. Thank you. I love and, being on this show. Well, I love having you, and every show is so exciting. You bring such color <laughs> and great food Thank you. to it. It's but, easy when it's Mexican food. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this does take place in Mexico. We're going to be crossing the border, and you will see what a, what a horrific struggle this, uh, this is. But first of all, let's talk about the food we're going to make today. If you remember in the book, they stop and have street tacos on one of their yes. stops. And that's what I've made today is um, what I've done is marinated a flank steak and you put cilantro, olive oil, orange juice, garlic. Cumin is a very common uh, Mexican spice so everything has a lot of cumin in it. Um, and then you just marinate this and let it cook 10-15 minutes and then you simply slice it and when you eat street tacos, what you, traditionally what you put in a street taco is really just onion, cilantro, and lime juice. In the book, you remember, he loved sour cream, so there's a Mexican sour cream that I brought that we're going to be using. But street okay. tacos are just very simple Mexican food. I can't wait to try them. I remember that part in the book. And I'm going to do a chorizo and scrambled eggs. I was trying to decide should it be an omelet, but let's, I talked to some people and do it with scrambled eggs. So what I'm going to do, I have the chorizo, and I want to show uh, and if you need to do something there to get well, started. Well, I'm going to wait a few minutes to get this going, so. Okay. Well, actually, I'm going to start topping up my cilantro. Here is the chorizo. Now, you have recommended that if you want a less fatty kind of sausage, greasy, mm -hmm. to get a, is it Johnson? Johnsonville chorizo. I, I went to two stores and couldn't find that. So it's been recommended that I cook. I, I took the uh, sausage out of the casing and uh, I'm cooking it and then I will drain it on paper and maybe get some of that you know uh, extra grease out of it and in my other pan I'm going to start some I'm going to uh, saute some green pepper and onion and then I'll put the uh, eggs in with that and then when this is finished we will combine those together and that is sort of a what would you say a breakfast or yeah. a lunch? No, chorizo is usually uh, a breakfast. Well, they call it desayuno. And desayuno oh. is something that you eat um, uh, early morning. It's not really a breakfast. It's just a kind of a lighter lighter meal that you eat, will eat in the morning. Okay, well, we'll do that. Desayuno. Okay. And, uh, oh, now that, that looks good. Ooh. Yes, now the flank steak is, is done, and I'm just going to let it rest so it'll cook properly. And then we'll slice it up and put it into the, uh, into the tacos. Well, I have this chorizo cooking down, and I'm going to set it aside while I cook some uh, onion and green pepper and scrambled eggs. But let's get to the characters in this book. We were talking about what happened in the backyard. The whole family is murdered. Mm -hmm. And they know the police won't say anything because they're all in cahoots. Oh, exactly. The, the, the police run everything. They pay, and the cartel pays for every bit of information. They pay off hotels. They pay off cafes. I mean, you, you never know in certain parts when there's a, the cartel in movement. Another... Uh, what uh, happens, yeah. Uh, but the fact that it was uh, the little girl's quinceanera, which is a coming yes. out party, and the violence of that whole thing, that they take a, a, a really... Uh, an occasion that is supposed to be really joyous and happy and, and they target that occasion to send the message. And the message is Sebastian, the, the husband of Lydia, is a journalist. A journalist. 
and he writes the article that will uh, really brings out the head of the cartel, the lechuza, which is the owl, um, and you you have to give these uh, journalists so much credit because they do put their lives on the line they to report the, most, the truth. In 2017, they had the most number of journalists murdered yep. in the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. because yeah. of these cartels. Exactly, exactly. And I don't think people, if you haven't read this book, I don't think you really realize how violent that lifestyle is and how violent, yes. uh, and they do that to send messages. And they send messages in incredibly horrific ways. Oh, things you have never even imagined somebody would think of. Well, of course, Lydia realizes her husband's article in the newspaper that came out that weekend is very critical of him, of the cartel, yes. and they know where they live, so exactly. they come in and they're going to take care of everybody. But Lydia and her son escape. They yes. hide. Yes. And uh, the awful thing is you never really escape. That's that right. you are the, with the cartel, they have so many tentacles that you never really escape the violence, and it's proven throughout the book, where she will, uh, at every turn, there's a message that he sends. It lets her know, I know where you are, I know where you're going. And see, th this is what they're pursued by, uh, and she thinks they're going to fly up to Tucson. Mm -hmm. But they get to the airport, and she finds out she doesn't have the right paperwork for her son. So she has to start this journey that so many thousands have yes. taken yes. on a train. And what does that, what's the name of that train? It's a Bastia? The Beast. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The but beast. Uh, the thing about um, what people, what you understand in this book, are the circumstances why people endanger their lives and their children's yes. lives for a better opportunity or to escape the, the incredible violence. And that's exactly where she was at that point where I'm willing to risk my life and my son's life because I'll either be killed here, escaping, I at least have some chance of, of surviving and yeah. providing a life for my son. So they are, they find that since they can't take the airplane, they're going to have to leap on this train carrying migrants, and they all travel on top. And uh, it's very dangerous. It's dangerous. People get killed just trying, because the train doesn't stop and you leap on. You have to leap on while it's moving. And the, the, some of them have become so savvy and they understand when the trains are coming, when they're slower, uh, at what passes are less, uh, less dangerous. Um, like the two girls, Rebecca and her sister, uh, Solida, uh, have studied this and they know when is a good time to jump on the train uh, to, for the optimum survival. Uh, otherwise, like you say, they'll be killed, um, yes. die on the train. Uh, and when you were talking about um, the, uh, the, on the bus, remember when they were on the bus trying to get to the airport? Yes. The, uh, people that they were traveling with were from the state of Indiana, yeah. which I thought was interesting that she brought that in. <laughs> Me too. Yes, I, yes. I, maybe there was a definite reason. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't say. But you know, all of a sudden, this woman's life is turned upside down. Now, why is he trailing her? She knows the head of, she knows the owl. How does she know the head of the, the jefe of the cartel? Because, and many times when you, uh, he, he put on a different persona. He met her at the bookstore uh, and uh, seemed very upstanding, very uh, intelligent, um, really kind he of... He was intelligent. He, he was, but, and I think he, he brought her into, into her uh, good graces because I think if he did that, he disarmed her and she wouldn't believe that he was really as violent as he was. I kind of think he knew who her husband was, even oh, as he's coming into yes. her bookstore, and he charms her. Yes. And yeah. uh, so when she realizes that she put her husband's life in danger, right. of course, he put his life in danger, too, by writing it right. against the cartel. So what? how is she going to manage this with, with her son? Well, it's, it, you, you have such sympathy for a mother who is oh. willing to do whatever she can do to, to escape that violence because her son will be a part of that violence at some point if she doesn't 
yep. leave that. Yes. It, it, it just becomes a, a, a survival mechanism. She says, I, I have no choice because he knows who I am, he knows what I've done, and it's complicated and the, the hatred develops even, even more when the Latusa's daughter commits suicide and yes. then he blames her for oh. everything. Um, it, it, which is, and she understands that, and she knows what she has to do, and that is put herself in danger, put her son in danger, to try to make it to America, so, as North as they say. Yes, and the thing is, we could tell you horrific things that would just say, you'd say, I don't want to read this book, mm -hmm. but you should, because you would understand the dangerous life that migrants lead in order to leave the mm -hmm. country, yeah. and. Uh, she it, knows thought, now she's in his microscope or yeah, telescope, yeah. and they're they're going to catch her. Well, and, and the thing about uh, Lydia is that um, she goes from a pretty middle class family, feeling very secure, yeah, and then all of a sudden she's thrown into this migrant world where you really can, you understand how other people live and how other people are persecuted right. uh, and murdered. And uh, she realizes that her life was so easy, oh, or at least she easy. thought that, until her husband is murdered and her family, and she keeps reminding herself of that. Let's leave that on that note, and we're going to get ready for our second segment. We'll come back, and we will track the travels of uh, Lydia and Luca and the people they meet on this journey to the United States. We'll be right back, and in the meantime, we want to show you a picture of this train, La Bestia. Today my guest is Rebecca Espinoza Kubaki. The book is American Dirt by Janine Cummins and we are almost through with our meal and we want to talk a little bit about what you're going to do and then we'll talk more about the book. What I'm going to also make is a corn salad, a Mexican corn salad and what I've done is I've taken four cups of fresh corn, Indiana corn, and um, cooked it in butter, let it cool and then you add red peppers, cilantro, onions, um, and a lot of, we use, use cilantro for everything, so you I can never, it. you can never put too much cilantro That's in what anything. I think. Right. Uh, and then you just toss it all together and it's just a refreshing, uh, cold salad, um, and it, it just fits perfect with street tacos. With everything that you're making, I have cooked my chorizo, I've tasted it, and I've decided I'm going to use half of it with my scrambled eggs. <laughs> it, it really gives you a kick and uh, I've drained it a little bit and we're going to add that to this just as this is heating up and then I'm starting on my fruit bowl over here and uh, with some mangoes, blueberries, some little tangerines uh, and strawberries. So let's get back to the story. They're on and off the train. They stop in various cities <coughs> going up toward the border. They run into horrific experiences. They meet two young girls who have been almost trafficked. I mean, it's yes. been mm -hmm. horrific for them. And she and her son want to pay for them to get them into the <coughs> States. And uh, it, they have to go so much rigmarole. But, uh, and this is when you really see what it takes to- The grit. The grit the, and the horror and just the fact they stick to it and come uh, and we follow this story, uh, and during the next, next, before the next segment, we're going to show you the map of this part of Mexico, and you will look on the west coast, Alcapulco, and follow it straight up. You'll be at Nogales, and then you'll end up in Tucson. But they never know from minute to minute if they're going to make it. Exactly. And what happens to Lydia? What does she find out that the owl has been doing? following her and yes. she recognizes it because of the tattoo that uh, one of the tra passengers uh, yes. had on his Lorenzo. leg. Lorenzo. Lorenzo and each drop of blood shows the, the number of people that he's killed. So right away she realizes that no matter how far she goes 
he is still following her. And he's tracking her with his phone, too. Yes, yes. So <clears throat> all this, you know, she just doesn't know from minute to minute. If Lorenzo, who says, oh, yes, I know who you are. I've got a picture of you and the owl. And the, just things like this. And, and the, the, it's reality is you just never escape. You think you can get away from them, but you're constantly, constantly being followed because the tentacles are so wide and so strong. And um, you don't know if it's going to be the police officer or uh, the, the, well, the somebody on the train. It. or Yeah, somebody uh, on the train just walk up and shoot you. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but again, it goes back, especially Soledad, who uh, one of the sisters that has, uh, has left Honduras, uh, she was trafficked. She had no choice in, in the matter, and she was not going to let that happen to her sister, Rebecca. Um, and uh, again, the, the, the situation is so extreme that you put your life in danger because it's, it's even more dangerous in your own it's home country. It's more dangerous to stay back in Mexico. So we are following this. We are, act, you know, I like to say we're actually riding the train. We're not. We're very safe in our ch chair reading the book. Uh, and so the very last part of this is when they cross the border, hallelujah, but they lose some people due yes. to asthma and some things of that nature. And then they've got the American vigilantes out looking for them. Mm -hmm. Well, looking for anybody, and so uh, it, it, it's just horrendous. Just when you think that you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, you have another you know, horrendous situation that you have to deal with, and it's constant. It's, it's like you never really it's think. Relentless. And I'll, okay, we finally made it. You don't. No, and something else happens. And, and the jackal actually helps them. He's the one that takes them across and he has all kinds of signals for keeping them going when they should be quiet. And, and it's just, I just felt so scared sitting in the chair reading. Uh, but I, you know, I think it's a very important book to read. And uh, in a little bit, we'll talk about a bit of the controversy on this story, but I wanna see where you are on your- I, What I'm making is the, uh, the, the dressing for the, um, corn salad. And crema is sort of a Mexican sour cream. Uh, and uh -huh. uh, you yeah. find these at the Mexican stores. And that's sort of the base of it. And then you put a mayo, cumin again, you use a lot of cumin, paprika, and chili powder. You always have to have chili mm. powder. Um, it and it good. gives it a little bit of a tang. And then you top it off with a Mexican cheese. Um, and it's a uh, it's just a, a very flavorful, mild cheese that you put on Mexican food. Um, you guys use cheddar cheese, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many interesting ingredients. I even have something here for the fruit salad. It is a lime, what did you call it? A lime salt. Lime salt, and I will, right. When I'm done, I will sprinkle it on the fruit. Yeah. And I don't want to cook these eggs anymore. Uh, they, they kind of need a little boost of something. Uh, We'll put them on a plate and we'll serve it that way. Uh, but all these characters, most of them make it through. When they're on their last night, Lydia actually talks to the owl. She finds the phone, Lorenzo's phone, and the jackal has killed Lorenzo, but it doesn't stop there. He, she takes Lorenzo's phone and reads where the owl has been following her following all along. Her. She calls him, she says, stop this, stop. You've got to stop, you've got to stop. And he never says that he will or he won't. Yes, but I think that was a, the point, I think, where she felt she was finally in power. Oh yes, that finally. She, she was very she angry. She was breaking away from him. Yeah. And there, there was a point there where she realized she was going to survive, and he was not going to bring her down, and she had the upper hand. Uh, and, and it was her awakening, saying, I've gone through all of this, and it was worth it, because now I can provide a life for my son. And it, that's what happens, you know. They do get to the States. I mean, some more starts and stops. Uh, they wait till the vigilantes have moved on. Uh, you've got about three different groups besides the border police that can hassle them. You have the vigilantes either on the Mexican side or the American side. You have the, the, the migra, I guess, is the... Migra? Uh, migra. 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 Migra, the immigration. 
and they're following them. I mean, it is something to behold. Uh, and uh, actually, I, when, I, yes? I think what, the, what this book does for those who have never experienced anything like that, start to realize and in, in start to understand why they come to America and what they're yes. willing to risk to come to America. And what they're, they're risking is a, a, all of it is worth it for a better life for their families. And it does, whether you agree with the situation or not, you, start, you understand it. You start to realize that. You get that very close to feeling yes, what exactly. she is going through. And that was what I thought was so strong about the book. I just felt like, holy cow. I mean, yeah. I'd probably and say you put, something put stronger. Put yourself in, your, in that situation. Are you willing to go through all of that? Um, yeah. And we, I think we have to say yes. We well, would. She, we have no choice. She had no choice, particularly she, if she stayed in Mexico, she would have been murdered. Exactly. And, he, and he's tracking her all the way up. I mean, she's like prey. She's like a little rabbit that's exactly. being chased exactly. by a fox. And, and, oh. But I, I think the, um, the wonderful part of it is that she finally shows that she and starts to believe that she has the strength and she has the upper hand over the Letrusa. Yes. And it, it, um, it was all worth the journey that she took. It was worth the horse that she went through, the horse that she saw. And, in the uh, end. but you know, the, the end, they get to Maryland. I think it is where they end up and she cleans houses. That's exactly. another thing. She was never used to cleaning because she was upper middle, she was middle class in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And she never cared whether the house was not clean or not. Now she's earning her money as a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. and, um, and her son does well in school. And one day she's on the bus. Somebody gets up to pull the chain. What's on his arm? The tattoo for this group this group yep. and it, it sort of ends at, at that kind of a moment and you think see this is never ever over well and i think it's a, a what it says is you just always have to beware you just always have to look behind your shoulder well and we're going to continue to finish our meal here we invite you to our mexican uh comida comida Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be right back. But in the meantime, I want you to take a look of, at a map of the area that this story covers from Alcapulco straight north up to Tucson. And you'll have an idea what they did. We'll be right back. guest is Rebecca Espinoza Kubaki and the book is American Dirt by Janine Cummins and let's talk about what we made you are making. I'm going to make you a street taco Gail yes. and it's street tacos really are very simple you don't put a lot of things into it it's just onion cilantro and lime juice and Ooh, cilantro I love yeah, it cilantro and then you just squeeze a little bit of lime juice into your taco oh and made by you by hand and that's it Thank there you, you go. Thank you. I won't take a bite right now, <laughs> but then I will. Um, let's talk about you made the street tacos. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the corn salad, the Mexican corn salad, and it really is just uh, corn, Indiana corn, and red peppers and onions and typical Hispan uh, uh, vegetables. But what makes it is the sauce, where you put the caminos and the chili powder and mm. lime and this crema, which is uh, a Mexican sour cream. And you just toss that all together. And I made some scrambled eggs with chorizo. And that is a very hot, <laughs> hot sausage. And I only used half of it. And in any case, probably should have waited to put the eggs in, you know. But, but It's perfect. It looks good. It's even uh, better with a tortilla. Yeah. <laughs> that would, that's yes. right. Mm -hmm. And then fruit. We have mangoes and berries and strawberries and some tangerines here. Oh, she's going to test this mm -hmm. theory. Now, we've enjoyed the book, but when Oprah Winfrey brought this book to the attention of everybody, there was a, a bit of an outcry. They said, this woman is not a migrant. She's never taken this trip. Why didn't you 
flat iron press, why didn't you uh, use Hispanics to write this book? And why didn't why can't we get more, uh, you know, attention? Attention. That's the word. Mm -hmm. Now, is that should, should she be held called guilty? No. And you know, as a Hispanic, I am not speaking for Hispanics. I'm speaking on my behalf. I think the fact that she brought this issue to the attention and then it got attention doesn't matter how it we it was it surfaced, but it brought to the attention how horrific uh, crossing uh, into the United States is, how how dangerous it is, but how people are willing to do that for better lives. For a better life, yes. And I think we should. I'd say read the book. You will learn so much. And I'm glad you gave your opinion on this. And I agree with you. Yes. And I hope you enjoy the book, and we're so glad you came to see this wonderful food. And remember, good food, good friends. And what else? Good books. Make for a very good life. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Gail. <laughs>